Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and today is Saturday, June 4th, 2022, and we're here with live sewing chat. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I gotta put you all in. Hold on a second. <laughs> it's laying on my desk. All right. <laughs> that should be much better on the volume for you guys. Um, I don't know where this come from. I'll just sit it here for right now. It's a piece of um, satin. Oh, I, I was on my shelf earlier today. I think that's where it come from. So guys, I hope you all had a great week. I've been busy <laughs> um, getting things prepared for retreat. I've got, let's see, maybe nine days of preparation because I think the 10th day is retreat day. So yeah, I got nine days to get everything done. I have started making name badges. I have 12 or 13 of them done at this point. Need a total of 28. Uh, of course, you know, it, you think it don't take long to sew stuff out, but you know, it takes a little bit more than, you need, than it needs to. So I'm working on that. <laughs> I'm also still working on gathering final last list and this week I designed a T Quilt Quilt Retreats t-shirt. And so it came in today. So right before I came live, I just put this shirt on so you all can see it. So this is our retreat shirt here. Got the St. Louis skyline with the arch and churn dash, which is one of my favorite quilt blocks. So probably my I don't know why it's my favorite, but I, other than like if I'm doing string or crumb piecing, but it is one of my favorite uh, quilt blocks. It was one of my first ones that I did. So I decided to use the churn dash on this particular shirt logo. So I was so surprised to see them. I did pay extra to have them do rush shipment because I was so late getting the design in. I thought I was gonna make them myself. And then I was like, girl, you don't have time to make shirts. <laughs> So I was like, you need to put in an order and you need to do it today. So I did it like late Sunday night. So when they got there on Tuesday, because Monday was a holiday, when they got there on Tuesday, my order was sitting there. So the company was pretty fast with getting them done. I just had to pay, you know, a hefty little late fee, but that's okay. I got my shirt <laughs> and uh, that's all that matters. Um, so let me pull you all up on my phone. I rebooted my devices, so I'm hoping that everything works. I'm actually using a real phone today, so I guess I need to put this on silence. And take the volume down. <laughs> uh, I'm not using the... Uh, I haven't touched that phone since I was here live Wednesday, and it was acting up. So, hold on. Let me see if I can pull you guys up so I can read the chat comments. So hopefully you all, like I said, have had a great week. Everything's going well for you all. All right. So Brenda Foley is here saying hello T and friends. Linda Faust. Saying hi, T and everyone. I'm going to put this up here so I don't have to hold it the whole time. <laughs> and uh, Jennifer Mizard saying hi, everyone. Uh, cute low, new logo, Miss T. Thank you, Jennifer. Teresa McCormick says good evening, Miss T. Glad to be with everyone. Uh, Beth Dixon says hello from D.C. Sewing with Luane says hey, Miss T and gang. Hope your weekend is going great. Yes. I haven't stepped out the door. My husband has done the last two days of post office runs for me because I've been so busy. I haven't even stepped outside. I went from one pair of pajamas yesterday to the next pair of pajamas, okay? <laughs> Susan T says, hello, T and all T quilters. Shirley Peter says, hello, T and all. Joyce Hernandez says, hi, everyone, and Miss T. Remo JS says, hello, Miss T and quilters. Remember the thumbs up. Now, Miss Remo, uh js you know last wednesday when i i think it was wednesday when i opened up your uh card I, I you had written in the 
greeting card and it was really small and I didn't see, I looked on the back of the uh, gift card that she gave me and I didn't see an amount. So I just said, Ms. Remo gave me a gift card to Sam's. And then when I start compiling, trying to get my list, I'm typing a list of all the people that have donated to the retreat. And then when I went back to the greeting card, I saw she had written it very small in the greeting card. I think she didn't want me to read it. But uh, Miss Lady, you are something else. And I really appreciate everything that you're doing for me, the tea quilters. And I, and I emailed you. I know you responded, but I just wanted to just verbally thank you because... Uh, that was just very generous of you. I have spent a lot of money at Sam's and I still got to go make my final run to a different neighborhood because I think sometimes they um, want to play with the Sam's by where I live because it also serviced the, uh, quite a few of the city, North City. And so sometimes we don't be as stocked as other Sam's are. So I got to go to another Sam's, but so it's very, very much appreciated. I just want you to know that it is not something that I just take for granted or just think that it's a small token. You <laughs> have gone above and beyond, ma'am. So thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And uh, Janice Miller is here saying, just wanted to say hello to T and Quilting Family. Uh, Geraldine Lemma says, howdy, howdy. <laughs> Susan T, a featherweight. I love my featherweights. You know what's so funny? And I got this box up here because I got it's another uh, gift box that came in. Um, I don't. I've had my featherweight now for I don't know five years or something like that. I don't know. It's been a while, and it mostly sits in hibernation. Well, I don't have my Bernina unpacked. It's still packed from the last retreat. So I was like, I don't feel like taking all that stuff out, and I still haven't taken it out. So I'm thinking I'll go get my featherweight. So I did, I made a, a bowl cozy actually, and I got excess water, uh, stable, water stabilizer in there. But I made a little bowl cozy on it just to see how it worked. I didn't sew anything quilt related on it, but I thought that's what I might sew today is just make some bowl cozies. And then I'm thinking because the corners were kind of thick. I think I'm going to trim some of the batting out of the corners. So I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to do that. Should I trim before I sew or sew the seam and then trim away the batting in the seam? So I'm going to do it both ways today to figure that out. So this is my stabilizer that I'm trying to say what I do. <laughs> um, this is water soluble stabilizer. And so I'm just going to take the two outer edges and baste them together. And then hopefully I can use this to do some other stuff on. I'm trying to save stabilizer because stabilizer is expensive. Uh, just think if I was throwing this away, I only use, I haven't even used half of the stabilizer here. So I'm trying to get my money's worth out of the stabilizer. So it's just sitting here in this bag. That's what that is in this look, not this bag, this cozy bowl. <laughs> um, how many of you all <laughs> have all of your pot holders all over the place because you're using them once you take a hot bowl out of the uh, microwave? I, I eat a lot of soup, and so the more I heat up soups, the less pot holders I can find because I don't put them back up when I get through. I'll take it, the, uh, put the bowl in a sink or something, put some water in it. And then I don't know what I do with the um, pot holders because I'm, I'm eating while I'm working at my computer. I'm eating while I'm in here sewing. I'm eating while I'm um, watching television. It's like I got pot holders everywhere. It's like we're going to get these bowls and hopefully I'm gonna, I got a stack of them cut right there. And I'm hoping that if I can get some of these bowls made, I can leave my pot holders alone. <laughs> At least that's the goal. We'll see. <laughs> um, Geraldine says it was a busy week for her, too. Bonita Nance is here saying hello, Miss T and everyone. Remo says I finished four star general August blocks and borders. Woohoo! She's ahead of the game now because we did June and July blocks. So she's ahead of the game. I still have about three or four border blocks to do for the whole year. So I'm actually caught up now, which is a 
great feeling. So I don't have to do any more border blocks for August or September. Those are going to be our last. September will be our last month for having blocks. And then we'll have October where we got to put everything together. So I'm doing really good with that. I'm up to date finally. Uh, Darlene Crosby saying hello to you and everyone. I'm popping in to say hello and I have to watch the replay. I'm in North Carolina and getting on the road. Don't forget the thumbs up. Well, thank you, Darlene. Be safe. And Remo says, I like the t-shirt. I want to purchase one. Um, yes, ma'am. Send me your size, Rose. Uh, Sin says, hi, T and everyone. Yay, I made it on time. Almost. <laughs> yes, you're doing good today. <laughs> Nana's Creation says, hi there from so southeastern Oklahoma. Judy Judy saying, hello, T and Quilters. Handmade by Ying with Donna says, Hey, beautiful T. Hello, Donna. Welcome. Sue GSD says, good evening, T and everyone. Ten days until retreat. You can officially freak out now, T. I made a list. I got a list. Uh, I got a list of name badges I've made. I've, and I got a list of things that I need to pack and or do. And so I'm not as freaked out as you would probably think I would be. Now, maybe two days before might be a whole nother issue. But right now, Making that list and checking things off is kind of working for me right now. So that's helping me. I'm going to have to go out of here and come back in. Claudette Bettis is here saying hi, Tian, everyone. And then Sin is reminding people to hit the thumbs up. And my live chat stopped right there, but it's been a gazillion more. <laughs> um, maybe I am up to date. Hold on. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm wishful thinking, right? <laughs> I think when I come in initially, it doesn't, um, since it goes through all the ads and stuff, then it doesn't come back and update my chat. So hold on. I got Benita and then Darlene seeing, saying thumbs up. My niece, Lisa Thompson's here saying hello, everyone. Also reminding you to hit the thumbs up. And Sue says, love your little featherweight. Yeah. And, and this is the other thing. This thing is so little. <laughs> it is hilarious. It is so tiny. And I ordered, let's see, last Saturday or maybe, maybe I ordered Sunday or Monday. I can't remember. I ordered a featherweight, uh, the black table, because I think I want the black table that goes with this. And... Uh, yeah, I have. They told me they shipped it on Tuesday, but it has never been received by the post office. Okay, so I'm watching that ship to see what's going to happen with that. I don't know if they had to order it. They said they had them in stock, but apparently they must not have had them in stock if it's taking this long for it to get shipped. So, but yeah, I don't really sew on this a whole lot. Mostly I do strings and crumb piecing because I don't have to worry about quarter inch seam. So we'll see how this goes. I'm going to try to use this featherweight a little bit more. Darcy says, hi, T and all quilters. It was a beautiful day in Minnesota today. Hi, Darcy Savelli. Theolinda Gnome says, hi, everyone. Gomes, I'm sorry. I think I said Gnomes. Gomes. Uh, Janet Mackerel says, hello, T and T quilters. Colette Stark says, hi, T and everyone. Darcy is also reminding people to give that thumbs up. Thank you, Darcy. Marie H. is here saying hi, T and all. Hi, Marie. Great shirt design. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> Marie is even talking to the moderators. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Remo says, Miss T, I love your featherweight. Uh, Tinonyu Robert says, evening all. Deanne Palmer says, hi, Miss T. Greetings from... And then she says, hot zona. <laughs> it's only 100 degrees today, laughing out loud. Yes, that's the only reason now, I could do Arizona in the summer, but I definitely can't do all that hot in the, I mean, in the winter. I can do Arizona in the winter. I can't do it in the summer. That's just too much. And that's why I don't want to move further north. I don't want to move south. And I don't like the Midwest. It's like, but I don't have a choice. I got to stay in the Midwest. Um, I don't want any more snow than what we get. And I don't want to be any hotter than what we are. And Sue is saying that I can look for what you need in South County. She's talking about the Sam. 
but I'm going to use that gift card, so I'll have to do that. Uh, it's only a few, uh, a few more items I'm trying to get. I'm almost, well, I got to go to that, and I got to go to the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree, anybody should have that, so I'm going to hit the Dollar Tree when I'm further out anyway, too. Make sure I get what I need. <laughs> Uh, Ken's World of Crafting is here saying hello to all. Hey, Ken, welcome. Vivian Cabby saying hi, T and everyone. Shaquita Pearson, hello, Miss T and everyone. I love pajama days. Yes, I went from one set of pajamas to the next. And I still got pajama bottoms on right now, okay? I just put this shirt on so because it came in today. I go, oh, that's too cute. I'll put that on now. <laughs> uh, hey, Tiffany of Tiffany's Quilting Life. She says hi, T and everyone. I'm just listening from the pool, so can't type with wet hands, but quickly dry my hands to say hi. Hello, Tiffany. Have a great day, and I know pool therapy is good for you. Teresa Lynch says, I cut my batting at 9 inches and fabric 10. Yeah, and that's that's what you normally would do, except that I'm using the AccuQuilt die cutting system, so they cut the batting and the fabric at the same size. So what I think I need to do is probably just trim it down a little bit. So thank you. And uh, Sue says the two two ones are little beasts, cute and fabulous for everyday piecing. Yes, she's talking about the featherweight. Debbie says hello, T and everyone. Sin says my everything's are everywhere. Laughing out loud. <laughs> Right. <laughs> My brother is here, says hi, sis, and everyone feel good outside in the yard. I kind of knew you was going to be out there today. It was a great day to work, although I didn't step outside. I did open the door to, like, get the mail at the mailbox, and that's about, you know, all the outdoors I had today. Uh, Vicki Lemire saying hello. Leisha Moe says hello, Miss T and everyone. It's a great night for sewing chat yes if i ever do any sewing you know y'all have me chatting all the time and then the people go when are you gonna sew <laughs> wash your hands says laughing out loud i have a place where i hang my pot holders i put jelly rolls in my bowl cozies now that's funny <laughs> so she's still not using the bowl cozies to hold the um bowls the hot bowls <laughs> oh boy OMG, I just noticed what is different. You changed your sewing machine. Yeah, I'm just lazy because I'm like, I left my last retreat and it was about two weeks, a little over two weeks from one retreat to the next. And I just decided that I wasn't going to um, unpack all that stuff. So it's still packed, okay? Um, that Bernina is heavy, so I don't want to be unnecessarily picking it up and putting it back down. So I went and got this instead. And I did, I don't know if I can show you all this. Hold on. I got something sitting on top of my case. Give a shout out. <laughs> Give a shout out to, um, what is her channel? Oh my gosh, her name is Laura. I'm blocking Laura's channel. Isn't that terrible? But Laura came on and she had made a case cover for her bernina i have the old case matter of fact i can't i don't i can't find a key that will work one of my things so i've got this piece of tape over it so it doesn't lock because i don't want to get locked out once it closes but um uh i do know laura's channel i'm sure y'all down there telling me big time too but um she, she made a case cover and I love this case cover. And you can open it up and don't have to take the case off. And then the only thing that I did different because when I'm making stuff, most of the time I'm doing stuff in the middle of the night and I don't have what people have. And so I have to adapt. She used a, uh, two zippers uh, or either she used a double zipper, like a separating zipper that went both ways. So I don't have that. I just have the one zip on it. And uh, she's got the opening up here for you to put your handle through. And it's just really cute. I just really love it. And uh, I took it straight from her video. <laughs> she is really, really good. And uh, 
she even made the cover for the machine, which I also made. So I even got the cover for it. But isn't that cute? And I put my name on the front too. I can't remember if she put her name on it or not. There is no pocket on the front, but I did put a pocket on the back. Put a little, my seam ripper and wood press in here and then the rest of it is just for whatever else I have. But yeah, I love her channel. <laughs> But that's what that is. Let me just sit this back right there. Um, when Sprinter is here saying, hello T and everyone. Remo says, my husband and I just finished planting flowers and herbs. Dad asked my husband if he didn't mind. He goes, back home tomorrow oh so you had a he's there longer than i thought girl so that's pretty good you had a good visit and you got to play on your machine is he taking your machine back home miss remo <laughs> she got a new 770 plus so that's pretty cool <laughs> and sue talking about new countdown 467 days until 2023 retreat approximately 730 days until 2024 retreat so yeah right we got to get one under our belt first um i haven't booked anything for the 2023 retreat i think i received like uh me sue deborah uh winona and i think somebody else asked in the comment section so I haven't received like confirmed responses to a positivity for the 2023 retreat. So I may not be having the 2023. And then I know uh, Becky wanted to come too. So that's five. But I need 12 uh, bodies for that so that I'm not in the hole booking a place. Because once I put half down, this facility is a little different than the other ones. Some of the other ones would just have you put... Um, minimal amount down just to hold a date this place to hold a date you've got to put half down so that's a lot of money so yeah <laughs> hi teresa louise i quilt too says hello miss t and quilting friends t you sounded like santa making a list and checking things off you got that right girl if i don't there's gonna be a whole lot of stuff left here i'll be bugging my husband and i'm trying not to do that uh, Sharon Lewis says, hi, T and Quilters. Uh, Deanna Palmer says, are your retreats only in Missouri? Yes. And the reason why I do that is because I live in Missouri. <laughs> and, uh, and I used, I had my, furry, my very first retreat, I actually had in Hamilton, Missouri, uh, with Missouri Star, so we could go to Missouri Star every day. However, um, doing shop hops and all of that kind of stuff when it's not my location it was a lot of work and then that year i had about i'm gonna just guess and say about 35 people telling me that they were going to come to retreat so i was trying to get this lady that's part of a she's affiliated with missouri star missouri star brought her in to do housing um she i was trying to help her get a facility ready at the time and then when 35 people didn't register, it was only seven of us, including me. And I had also had brought a friend. And <laughs> so it was really six, well, really five people that came to retreat. And I knew three of them. <laughs> I got to meet Jennifer Mizard and I got to meet Claudette Bettis. Now, I'm not upset about that retreat. I had a great time. I think we all had a great time at that retreat. So, um, it was a lot of work for me to go across the state for a retreat that only had seven people. And I said I wasn't going to do that again. I'm not going to inconvenience myself for an unknown. Uh, when I'm here in the St. Louis area, I know every place that we're going to go to. So there is no issues with that. So I've just decided that if I'm going to do retreats, I'm going to do them in my locale. And then we can carpool or rent a bus and go wherever else we want to go, which is what I did. We actually are going to Missouri Star. Uh, I rented a, a, a chartered a chartered bus. And so we're going to have a bus driver, a, a um, professional driver. So I don't want to be driving people that far. 
So, but they are only in Missouri. So that's correct. Joyce Hernandez says, I thumbs up at the door so I don't forget. Thank you, Joyce, and thanks for the reminder. Sue says, I have a cheat sheet for you and Kevin. I will take it to work tomorrow and get it laminated for 221. So that's awesome. Because y'all know I just started sewing. I ain't put a drop of oil on here. Here, I had this machine clean and then just put it up. Didn't even sew one seam on it. So I do need to put some oil on here. But I was like, it can make a bowl cozy. <laughs> Woo wee. Um, Carla says, good evening, Carla Ford. Good evening, T and everyone. I'm so glad I was able to join. Well, welcome, ma'am. Mary is here saying hi, everyone. Um, let's see. Trying to make sure I don't miss anybody, but y'all got a lot of comments, and then y'all go, when's she gonna start sewing? <laughs> Wash your hands, says T. I like to make large mug rugs to put in my refrigerator. Great way to keep the fridge clean. Just wash the mug rug, excuse me, burping off of nothing because I haven't eaten a thing. <laughs> um, just clean the mug rug when they get dirty. Now I do have chef liners in my refrigerator that I use, just the little plastic liners that I do uh, take in and out, but that's also a great idea. Also pads um, for the moisture. That's the only thing I would um, be worried about is the moisture on the fabric. But um, I do use the plastic uh, liners in there. You can get extra keys at the Fat Quarter Shop. Yes, I can get them at the Singer Place too. But I had somebody bring their keys into one of my scrap club meetings and none of their keys would open that lock. So it was kind of crazy. I think I just need to have the lock replaced. I think it's just a bad lock. So cute, that cover. Yes, I need to make them for my uh, feather. We shall may have an idea about the key. Yeah, because I think I'm going to have to talk to somebody. I think I need the case, the lock replaced. I need a lock so I can actually take this one off and put another one on. I think the lock's bad. <laughs> Mary, it just stopped at you when you said I need to make them for and that was it. It was so very easy. Thank you, Benita. <laughs> At least I know her name, right? I just, I don't even worry about the channel because she always has her face on her thumbnail. And then I know her name is Laura. <laughs> so thank you, Benita. I knew somebody was going to get me straight because I do want to give her credit. That's why I pulled it up here and then all of a sudden realized I didn't remember her channel name, but I just know her name. So thank you so much. A lot of people love the co uh, cover, T, great colors. And you know, she makes everything in her studio in uh, Bernina black, red, and white. So that's what color she used for hers. So that was pretty cute. But I, I do order all of my supplies from the Featherweight Shop. So I am familiar about them. I just need to figure out about this key. But like I said, I haven't been using it. So maybe if I start using it, the needing the new lock thing will not be out of sight, out of mind. That's the other thing. Hey, Sandy Agger says, woo, I made it. <laughs> Hello, all. <laughs> Love that case. I need to make one. That's Alicia. Uh, Melissa LePage is here. Hey, Melissa. She says, that's a great idea. And wash your hands. I don't know what wash your hands said. That was a long time ago. <laughs> In my head. <laughs> Craft with Love says, greetings, T and all. Was busy making sewing machine covers, so what did I miss? I was busy making sewing machine covers. That's what you just missed. I showed a featherweight cover, the uh, actual box cover, and the sewing machine cover, I guess, too. The Eccentric Quilter says, hello, everyone. What have I missed? Nothing, because we just chatting. <laughs> That's what we tend to do. I say I'm going to come on here and sew and chat. And then the chat comments are so long that I don't get a chance to do a whole lot of sewing on here. When I get off of this live, I go get me something to eat normally because I'm a night owl. I'm on a different schedule. I just ate my first meal about 4.30 today. So I'll get me something to eat. And then I come in here and actually do the real sewing, the real work. <laughs> I hardly ever sew. I don't sew very productively, let me say, doing the lives. Um, 
I am fully booked for the 2023 QuiltCon. Picked up my Amtrak tickets yesterday. Now, that's pretty cool. Francis Jackson. Is that the one that's in uh, Georgia? Uh, Luane. Francis Jackson says, good evening, T and everyone. And Tunanyi's T says, just unpack my new Janome 7700. Can't wait to use it. Now, that's awesome to get a brand new machine. That is truly awesome. Handmade by Time with Donna was what the name of your sewing chair. Oh, handmade with yen. I think she's talking to somebody else. Okay. Makes sense. I'll save up for one. Tanya Hawkinsmith says, good evening, Miss T and everyone. Love that you have your featherweight out. I can't wait to watch you sew with it. Me either. <laughs> I guess I don't even have it on. I guess I could cut it on, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. <laughs> um, T, like your featherweight, I have to get a new motor for mine. It works, but so too slow for me. And that's the other thing. I've got the pedal, the old-fashioned, the original pedal with the two buttons. I hate those things. It takes me forever to get acclimated to sewing with those. Uh, I sew with them on my, with my, I can't hardly feel them if I use my shoes. And then when I use my bare foot, eventually my foot starts hurting because I'm not used to using it. So I, you know, I'm, I'm in this learning phase with this featherweight. Have to bail, being called to dinner, that's sin. Uh, Elena Quilter says, hello T, finally on a live. Well, welcome to a live. Let me show y'all really quick what's in this box. This box came from Judy Judy out of Oklahoma. And she's got a note in here. This is for retreat. <laughs> so I do want to show this before I start, just start sewing up in here. It says a note from Judy. Got her name on it. It's too cute. <laughs> it says, Dear T, these fat quarters are for your retreat. I sent Kevin extra ones for his help with the four-star general quilt along. Have a great retreat. Love and hugs, Judy Brown. So she sent Kevin some fabric. Uh, I wonder if it was reproductions for his because he was having difficulty getting reproduction fabric. So that's pretty cool. Wow, wow, wow. So let's see. Oh, she's got the box in here. And she's got a thing on here that says Kevin the Quilter. So she's got a uh, bundle in here for Kevin. And I don't even think Kevin's in here. Where is Kevin? Hmm. Huh. And he's got fabric. So that's cute. So he can, he loves reproduction uh, fabrics too. But these are definitely his colors. These are not all reproductions, but he loved these colors. He loved, he gonna love this one. This one here on top. And this one. So that's really cool. All right. And then, let's see. I don't know. Oh my goodness. You got uh, K Facet uh, Fat Quarters. I'm trying to see how many. One, two. And some Tula Pink. Two, three, four. Let me go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I was just trying to make sure so it looks like everybody will be able to get one. So just trying to make sure. This looks like it's the same thing. So another twelve. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Uh, is this all Tula Pink? Because maybe it's not k Facet. It might be all Tula Pink. <laughs> so 12 and 12 is 24. 25, 26, 27, 28, and it's 29. So she's got uh, some leftovers up on the top. I'm thinking this is Tula Pink. I don't know. Uh, Tula Pink again, two pieces. 
maybe three pieces and then two pieces of motor grunge in this burgundy color and a purple so that's pretty cool so thank you thank you judy for that this will most definitely be going out as a price so thank you so much i'm gonna hold kevin stuff hostage <laughs> since he's not here watching I don't know where he is because I talked to him last night. So hope not, hopefully nothing important came up. All right, sit this on top of the case. Just want to get that off the desk and put this in there so I can write it on my list. I already put your name because she told me it was coming. And I just didn't know what she had in the box. So now I can fill that in. So thank you. Thank you so much. Very much appreciated. And everybody at retreat will be able to get a fat quarter from you so that's really sweet francis says t did you get the led bulb for your feather rate it really makes a difference girl i got this uh led bulb in here and it's just it's just lit up right here but y'all know i'm gonna put i'm gonna end up i'm gonna have to put me a light or something on here because this is not a lot of light okay especially if i cut this off it's just not a lot of light here's my i'm gonna cut it off that's my bulb off and that's it on. That's not a lot of light, okay? <laughs> so we'll be getting um, more light added onto this for sure. Um, Tananya says, thanks, excited to use machine. I tried reading manual, but kept falling asleep. Now that's funny. And Teresa says she doesn't get much sewing done on her live either. <laughs> she knows how I feel. Yes. Uh, friends, okay. Thanks, excited. Okay, I think I read that one. People saying nice box, love this. And Judy, Judy saying you're welcome. Enjoy. That was so nice of you, Judy. And uh, yeah, very nice. I think they all are Tula Pink fabric. So let's see if we can sew something on this machine. <laughs> Starting with um, these bowl cozies, okay? Because we're not going to be playing over here with quarter inch seam when I don't even use stuff, okay? It does have the markings for quarter inch, but like I said, this is not very bright to me. I can see the quarter inch, um, but yeah. I'm going to have to end up messing up my decal or something and put me a external light right there. So don't come at me, Sue. <laughs> now, this is the problem with the bowl cozy. It's really thick in the corners when I put two of these together with batting. And I do want two of these with batting because the whole purpose of it is that I don't want to get burned from a hot ceramic bowl. So I think two pieces of batting are necessary. Um... I cut this with the AccuQuilt die cutting machine, so therefore I don't have to do the darts. But what I think I'm going to need to do, um, I've already made one change, and I said this time I, I was going to come in here, fold this thing up like this, and I don't really care about the dart because that's not critical, but I'm gonna, just going to trim on the outer edges. So I'm just going to fold it and trim. So we're going to try that. Sue says, I use side lights for all my machines, modern and vintage. Recently put a daylight shop light over my long arm and what a difference that made. Yeah, but I, I, I want the light attached to the machine. Isn't that terrible? I don't want to have to, like I have these lights, but I need this light to be coming right off here onto this plate. And the only way I know I can do that is to put the light there. And so I'm thinking about it. <laughs> You know, at least people restore machines, right? So if I mess it up too bad, <laughs> it can be restored. Because I've been really, really, really thinking about having my machine painted red, sending it to the Fat Quarter Shop, okay? <laughs> been thinking about it. I like red. So I'm just going to cut off like a quarter of an inch just to give it something. I didn't do a half inch yet, so we're going to sew this one. 
put it back on here and see what we get. And like I said, I didn't even trim in the V. I'm not really concerned about the V. Uh, because it's two, it's going to be two layers instead of four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just put some pins in here so it doesn't move. Um. This chat is just running. Do you use just one layer of batting in your bowls? I used to, I use to make it more stiff. No, because I got the other piece, and I've got the batting here that I haven't trimmed. I just trim this piece down just a quarter of an inch. And I'm just trying a quarter of an inch. I I think most people say they cut it like an inch shorter. So I'm going to try a quarter of an inch first. I just eyeball that. So it's going to be a little different all the way around. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Mary says, my new light from Featherweight Shop is really bright. This one is not. I, and I bought mine from the Featherweight Shop. But like I said, this bulb is five years old. Now, comparing to the other light that was in here, this was really bright. <laughs> But it's not really bright anymore. Teresa says, T, where does your belly bar come up to you on the long arm? Actually, uh, just slightly above my belly, I would say. So it is right there. Uh, I'm I'm pretty tall, so I don't, I don't want to be bending down. And then I also have a stool. If I'm doing some concentrated work in a particular area, then I have a stool that I can also use to... Uh, make that a lot easier as well. Susan Baker says, T, they make an LED light for our featherweights. Yep, that's what's in here now. T, I use those smallish odd lights for the machine. Uh, I don't know what that one is. Um, I have to look that up. I don't know nothing about that one. All right, so I don't even mark, okay, because it's a bowl cozy. <laughs> so I'm just going to put this down and sew. I ain't going to ever sew messing around with y'all, okay? T, okay, and then she says, my neck is killing me. We raised the table today hoping it helps on long arm. Yes. So, yeah, you probably need to have your belly bar a little too low. Now, I've had people that say they have theirs all the way up to here, and then if you're doing like very concentrated micro quilting then that's when you might need to have it lower but i also have micro handles that i use if i'm going to do some concentrated work like that but i try not to do that unless i'm doing it on my own quilt because uh, custom quilting is a nightmare uh, it's it's a lot of wear and tear on your back because you're constantly doing something over and over again as compared to running a panto and being consistent you know you're doing the same thing um Custom quilting can cause all kinds of issues because you got to have it at the right height for whatever task it is that you're doing. And then when you're custom quilting, you're, you could be doing free motion, you could be doing computerized, you could be doing stitch in a ditch, you could be doing other different line work, messing with rulers and uh, quilting templates and stuff. So it's a lot, it's a lot of work. And Craft would love saying she wants to uh, do her featherweight in teal or apple green. Okay. Now I got to find this dumb stop on this pedal. That's the only thing about the featherweight is this uh, button I got to press. I do have my bigger pedal stay. I know some of you all don't know what that is, but I have a pedal holder that keeps my... Uh, pedal from moving and so then I have my big one on here so when I'm not sewing my foot's not resting on those knots I can take my foot and put it to the side <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and trim this one down too and right now I'm just doing an X through the middle and I guess I should have Probably trimmed off a half inch instead of a quarter, but just getting any of this um, 
bulk out of here. It's going to help over none. And I'm cutting two layers of batting, and these scissors are like, no, girl, you cut paper with these, too, remember? <laughs> I'm not going to be able to see. I got to figure out where to put my phone so I can see as I'm sewing, but not in your way, either. Hold on. Maybe we can move you further that way. <laughs> um... Hi, Stephanie from Memoirs of a Long Arm Quilter. Um, all right, we'll put this back down. All right. All right, eyeball again, you know, precis precision sewing over here today, right? <laughs> I'm like, it's not going to be perfect anyway. I'm sewing on a featherweight. <laughs> It is very sweet, and I know if I put some oil on here, it wouldn't even make as much noise as it's making. But it's not making a lot of noise. Okay. See, I don't even have thread snips in here. This is pitiful. Let me get some a different kind. <laughs> All right. We got to go the other way now. Okay, <laughs> you can get a replacement petal and card from Featherway Shop. That's a regular model. Yeah. And I think I still need to keep this because I, I do know that I can order another foot. I guess I need to just do that. But like I said, it's out of sight, out of mind because I don't use it. But um I do know to keep the original because it it helps with its value if you got the original um card as well but there's nothing wrong with it it's just that i don't like it <laughs> hi don cunningham she says hello everyone tanya says what is the silver stand by your thread i think it's i don't need one of those all of my things have come from the featherweight shop i have i got the light I got this thread stand extender for my R fill thread because that's what I, uh, I just happened to, I just wanted it on my featherweight because when I put this up, all I got to do is just pull this out. It doesn't screw in. It just sits in the hole back here and, uh, and then it'll fit in the case. Whereas if I use my regular um, pre-standing thread thing, it won't fit in the featherweight's case. It's too big. So that's why I bought this one. I bought my bobbins, uh, my quarter inch foot, I think, came from them. Did I get a quarter inch foot? It's not on here now if I do. I thought I bought a quarter inch foot. But yeah, anything that I've purchased, uh, my oil and grease, all of that came from the featherweight shop. So now I'm just going to make, uh, I'm sewing at a quarter inch. I'm making, I keep forgetting, I got my shoe down here. Um, backing up. That's the only thing I got to get used to is going back and forward to, whoops, see, I didn't put it back down to, um, you know, to do reverse stitch. <laughs> it's different. Thank you so much for this information. I have to check out the featherweight shop. Yes. And the reason when I first was buying stuff from the feather uh, for my featherweight, there are other shops that sell single products. Their shipping is awful. And the featherweight is very reasonable with shipping. And sometimes you can probably even get free shipping. I haven't ordered anything in a while because I think I ordered about three times and got everything I need for it. And then I'm like, if you're not going to sew on it, you need to quit buying stuff. So that's kind of where I'm at. But yeah, everything I buy for my machine, I get from the Featherweight store uh, shop. Okay. 
everything. <laughs> so I'm just putting in the darts now. I got four of those to do. Sue says, I have the electronic pedals for my featherweights and 301s, but I keep the original pedals with the machine. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome, Tanya. Come on. I keep putting my shoe back on. <laughs> See, I'm just not used to it. It's not that it's uh, bad to sew on. I'm just not used to it. But if I used it more, I would uh, love it. Like I said, I was mostly doing strings and uh, crumb piecing because I didn't have, so I wouldn't have to use reverse uh, stitching and all that kind of stuff. But I'm jumping in today. Still got this shoe on I shouldn't have on, okay? I don't know why I keep putting it on. I'm going to have to move this shoe. All right, put it over. Because <laughs> I can't feel the pedal unless I'm barefoot. All right. So this just happens to be a project that I need um, backing up. So that's, and that's good too, because it'll make me get in the habit of using it. Because the first time I went to go back up, I'm like, um, how do I do that? I forgot. <laughs> I was like, girl, raise the lever. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and Sue says that the Featherweight Shop, they do have excellent tutorials. They do. They're the ones that I saw. They had painted their, their model. So they can show you where the oil. I'm like, oh Lord, I'm tired just from watching. I have to say, for for this machine to be created when it was created, um, it was this is pretty cool. The fact that you don't have to even stop to do your reverse stitching is really nice. All right, let's see how many more of these I got. I'm done. All right, so we can lift this up, cut that thread. All right, so we got all of our little... <laughs> See the little tucks in there? That's the one thing I like about the AccuQuilt is that you don't have to do them darts. You know, cut them out. But if you're going to cut them, I do recommend trimming out some batting. So let's see if I trimmed out enough to make it less bulky. And now we got to uh, pin. Put some pins in here. I guess I can use some clips too. I don't know if I packed them. I might have packed them up. They might be packed up too. <laughs> All right. So we'll just put a few pins in here. Is there a pattern somewhere for the bow cozy? Um, basically, you, you cut a 9-inch square and a 10-inch square. of uh, You cut a 10-inch square of batting, a 9-inch square, no, a 10 inch square of fabric, a 9 inch square of bat batting. So that way your batting is not at the edge because I die cut, mines are at the edge. Um, and basically you're gonna just put a dart in the center. You're just gonna fold it, it's a bowl. It doesn't have to be precise. So you don't need an actual pattern. There are so many YouTube videos, and uh, so you just start with a square. AccuQuilt just got very fancy and rounded the corners. You could do that too. You can just round your corners as well. Um, 
but that's how you normally would make a bowl cozy. And then I just have one other step that I add because I hate uh, bags when you wash them and then, then they flop all out. So, yeah, I just have one other step I add. All right. So... And if, if I just cut out a quarter inch, I may be cutting out a half inch on the next one. So this was a test to see if just a half inch coming out of there would work. It was so bulky when I turned it before. I was like, oh, no. On that one. I only sold one. And I'm already in here sweating. I probably need water. Cynthia Fields says hi to fellow quilters on my way home from dance concert. She is five, so watching in car, my featherweight froze. So it's to the doctor. Thumbs up, everybody. Well, thank you. Be safe getting home. All right, so now we're gonna uh, I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam here. My only concern are you when you all do the half the inch because you've got a half you got a half inch of space on each side and then when you go to top stitch you're not top stitching on the batting and I wonder about that too would that make it uh, so that it's bulky uh oh it came unthreaded <clears throat> and wrapped around the guide bar up here mm. I don't know. I think I'm just thirsty right now. All right, let me make sure I got a good end on here. Just get threaded a little bit different from the inside to the outside. <laughs> All right cut the thread and then I didn't make sure I had a long enough tail all right so I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam because the reason why I trimmed out only a quarter inch of batting is because I felt like when I top stitched once I flipped the bowl that it wasn't going to catch the outer edge of the batting and it was just going to be floppy so I want to stitch on the batting so we'll see oops I had it up for reversing. <laughs> okay. Nice thing about being left-handed is I can put my pins far back and still be in the fabric. I don't have to pull them out. Because my pins are backwards for you all. <laughs> for most of you. I know Benita is left-handed, so it's not backwards for her. I do like this little machine. I don't know why I don't use it more. I should. I want to put my needle down. I need to make some four patches on here and make sure I practice my quarter inch seam. Whoops. I don't know. I was all the way up to three eighths of an inch somewhere. I don't know how that happened. I'm trying to make sure I know where I'm turning back to the front. I was going along the edge. My batting was trimmed a little bit more in that spot. I'm going along the edge of the batting instead of the that one's got to come out. All right. So I think we're done. This don't have a knee lift. <laughs> Y'all know I love my knee lifts. 
<laughs> it don't have that. All right. So we're going to turn this out and see if it's less bulky. <laughs> it already feels less bulky than the other one, just holding it, okay? So let's see. I'm not reading comments, guys. I'm sorry. What year is your featherweight? I have a 1948. It's a 50-something. I can't remember right now. I don't know if I wrote it in my book. It's a 1950. Okay, I lost my hole. Okay. And see how the batting is loose here? Like kind of floppy. And I wonder if it gets washed. I, that's why I only cut out a quarter inch, trying to see if I can top stitch and hold that edge down when I top stitch. But we'll see in a minute, won't we? <laughs> So that's pretty cool, Debbie's got a 1948. I haven't read a whole lot of these comments. T, I'm just curious, how many sewing machines do you have? I have 32 and I was told that is ridiculous, laughing out loud. I don't know. <laughs> um, I can try to name them and then you can, somebody can count them. I got my grandmother's Singer clone. It's not a Singer. I have a Singer treadle. Uh, I got the Gamma Long Arm. I got the Bernina 770. Also have the Elisimo, the original Elisimo. Baby Lock. Have Baby Lock. Uh, Elagio. Baby Lock Elagio. <laughs> I have. Uh, quite a few singers. I got the Singer Quantrum XL 1000. I have the Singer Quantrum CXL. I have a Singer uh, 9960. And then I have a Singer Heavy Duty. And then I have a Singer, I don't know what the numbers is. Sue, help me. It's the, um, it's the one that they got, it's got the funny name. Uh, it looks like it's uh, modern, like it's an airplane or something fancy about to take off. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, I got it. Just, just put down an old singer. I got actually two of those because I bought one because I, I really wanted one. And then I got it at a great price, like 50 bucks, but she didn't have any of the cams that came with it. So that's why it was so cheap. So then I found this lady that was selling the machine with the cams, and I wanted the cams, and it was cheaper because I went online looking for the price for the cams for the machine, and it was cheaper for me to go buy the whole machine with the cams than it was to, um, than to just buy the cams by themselves. Let's see if Sue is the 501 Rocketeer. Thank you. <laughs> When I look at that machine, it reminds me of the Jetsons. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I got that machine. Um, I got the Bernina record. I don't know what the number is on that. It's a... Uh, I don't know what the Bernina record number is, but I got a Bernina record. And then I've got this featherweight. So, you all tell me how many machines I got. I don't know if I missed any. <laughs> That's how many machines I have. All right. Now, to me, it's less bulky with just doing a quarter inch. And then when I top stitch, I'm going to be catching that batting and not just catching space, fabric space. And I can feel the batting up at the top. Trying to find something to poke in the hole. I guess I'll use my pen. <laughs> so I can round out these corners. And I'm not going to top stitch this because I don't have a heated iron right here. And uh, 
I would like, well, let's see. I might sew one of them. We'll see. See if it's necessary to press. <laughs> I do like to roll my seams back. Like, if it's on the outside, I'd rather have my outside going a little bit to the inside than to see the inside fabric on the outside, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. So maybe I, maybe I will. We'll do it anyway. What the heck? It's a bold cozy. <laughs> it's not a bag. If it was a bag, I would be a lot more persnickety about this. But when you have this opening to shut, it's a lot easier to do if it's been pressed. See if I can put some pins in here to hold it. I have nothing in the regular place. Put two pins in it to hold it. And I'm missing all kinds of comments, so. <laughs> uh, and then Susan is telling the other Sue that us vintage sewing machine people are a cult too. Because Kevin, he really loves using vintage machines. He doesn't even have an updated machine. And for him to be thinking about getting um, the Janome uh, quilter is amazing. Sue says she has 45 machines, approximately 36 of vintage. Love them all. Oldest is an 1889 treadle. And I don't know what year my treadle is just off the top of my head. It's probably, like I said, stuff is written in books. I write it down so I don't have to remember that. But, yeah. Amazon sells three ruler sets to make three sizes of bowl cozies. What is year? I've answered the year. I asked the question because I think you said that you keep buying machines but didn't say how many you had laughing out loud yep and I had gotten my sister had given me some sewing machines that her daughter had and I might still have one trying to figure out if I can get a power cord the other ones didn't work and I'm like I'm not going to be bothered with trying to fix this stuff so I didn't even worry about those I'm just going to go right along the edge of the foot because I want to make sure I get that opening closed. So I'm not doing a quarter of an inch. Okay, let me go back, put you it down so I can turn. Didn't go backwards, huh? <laughs> let me go forward. <laughs> backwards was where I wanted it to go, okay? <laughs> okay, let me get this under here because I haven't pressed the thing. Okay. Like these are just going to be holding my soup bowls. It's not that critical. But we like our stuff to be pretty anyway, right? Okay. In the corner of a dip there. You know, it's sewing through this with no problem. It sold through the thick one with no problem. It was just that I, it was me. I couldn't handle the thickness. The machine was stitching it. I just didn't like it. I couldn't control it. Like, that's too thick. This one's much better with taking just a quarter of an inch out if you want to catch that batting. So I think I'm just going to... Since I'm going to be die cutting mine anyway, I think I'm just going to trim out a quarter inch. <laughs> Am I not stitching? <laughs> you mean tell me I did all this stitching and I'm not stitching? It stopped when I did the bowl, I mean the uh, opening. And if I'm out of uh, bobbin thread, we can just shut down, right? <laughs> <laughs> Because I haven't done a bobbin. That might be what it is. Hold on. 
This is gonna be funny. Yep, Bob is empty. <laughs> this is gonna be really cute. What a, where's the book? <laughs> oh my goodness. Huh. Bobbin goes up here, I'm assuming. I got to pull something out. Or twist something back the other way. I don't know. <laughs> Book. So, <laughs> ooh wee. Mm. Deanna says she's looking. Uh, Deanne says she's looking for a treadle. I got my treadle about two years before I retired because I said I was gonna get me one when I retired. But then I saw one. And I said, okay, you need to buy this while you see it because it's not like you're going to find good ones in great condition all the time. So, hold on. Let me go down to the bottom, see if Sue's trying to help me. <laughs> this is too funny. I don't even know how to wind a bobbin, okay? This is how long it's been. I know I wound the first bobbin because it's got the same thread on it that's on the top. Okay. They got all this information up in the front, and then they start showing you how to operate the machine toward the back. To remove a bobbin, to wind a bobbin, it is necessary to understand the stop motion B, which is the balance by the balance wheel. Stop motion B. I don't know what they're talking about, girl. <laughs> then we come to a screeching halt. <laughs> oh, my God. I know it comes around this. I thought I pulled something out. This right here, isn't it? This. <laughs> this, this right here got to get moved. <laughs> Hold on. All right. Okay, so now we made it so it's not going to run the machine. Ta -da! <laughs> All right, so now we've got this machine threaded. Oh, it doesn't even get fully threaded. It just goes through this top. That means I got to unthread it. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Here we go. I left that thread on there. I just cut it <laughs> just to make sure. Okay, so then it goes then under and between the tension disc. That's what I was looking for. And then and then through one of the holes in the left side of the bobbin. All right, I think I got you. Let's see if it works. Okay, so this didn't, it's not turning my bobbin. Okay, am I supposed to tighten this back up? Nope, that's moving that. All right, so. <laughs> Release the bobbin wheel by turning the stop motion screw over towards you. It is necessary to hold the balance wheel by loosening. Place the bobbin on. The winding spindle and push it out as far as it will go. Oh, oh it's supposed to hit the, the rails. Okay, I got you. 
Lordy Lord, help! <laughs> and this is going crazy on the bobbin. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> This is terrible. It's like I can't even wind a bobbin. And I don't know if it stopped on its own or what. We're going to stop right there just in case because we're not going to do an overflow. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> All right. Now, I, I, since I ran out of thread, I don't forget which way the bobbin goes in. And of course, and they're doing it right-handed way. And I'm left-handed. Okay. Mm. This right here, thread's going over. And... Okay, so just should be regular. Pull it into the slot and we're done, maybe. <laughs> this is too funny. Okay. I gotta turn it around. I'm so left handed. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oops, I got a little piece of thread down here. I don't know where that comes from. There it goes. Thread up on top. Put this in. Close that up. And then. Okay. All right. <laughs> now we got to rethread. And we're only going to wind one bobbin because we wouldn't do right and, you know, wind more than one, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> we're just trying to make a bowl cozy here. See, Sue, I told you I need some help. Okay, I think I'm all right now, though. Hopefully, I got everything in here right. We'll find out in a minute, won't we? And I got to raise this up. Oops, I got to close it back. So this goes all the way back up. This gets locked. And I can raise this needle to thread it. <laughs> I'd have been done on my Bernina. And this is what happens when you don't use a machine, you know. You're just not comfortable with it. All right. We're not sewing on my project, though. I had a piece of scrap that I had in my bag. I in my case, I always keep a piece of scrap, but we'll use this because I put that box on top of the case. And we're just going to sew a test piece to make sure it's working here. Do I need to? I need to pull this bobbin thread up. That's what I need to do. <laughs> All right. Yay! Success. Well, yeah, success, I think. We'll see. It. Hold on. Yeah, success. <laughs> I'm like, are you sewing or not? We're fine. All right. 
<laughs> Sue says, I'm trying to help, but you can't hear me. <laughs> All right. The bobbin goes back in the case, similar to the long arm bobbin. Okay. Uh, Vicky says uh, something about she just got a Morris. It is a Singer Clone 15 uh, made in Japan. Yeah, because that's what happened with Singer was um, Japan ordered machines. And then they ordered the machines and took them apart so that they could remanufacture them. So that's how come all these clones are out here. And my grandmother had one. I was sure hoping it was a Singer Featherweight when she first told me I could have her machine. But... Her machine's only worth about $25 in the case, <laughs> in the table, but it's worth more than that to me because it was my grandmother, so. And I was sewing, I was all the way around this bag thinking I'm doing something. <laughs> I'm trying to fold the underside. This little part just might show. <laughs> this is why you need to press. If you don't want something to show. But it's not bad. And it's going through the two layers of batting here with no problem. Um, so that four layer is the problem. Four layers of batting. Actually might like this little dude i have to do a quilt block on it though a real quilt block not a string or a crumb <laughs> which is what i was doing with it before i have never done serious sewing on it i think when i'm at retreat i'm gonna add a light on here though Sue going to kill me, but I'm going to put it on here anyway. All right. Success. Now I got, see, hold on. Trying to get it so I can cut. Why not just use the thread snips, child? What's the matter? <laughs> All right, so now I got that part done. Okay, cute little bow cozy. I'm gonna do one more step. I'm gonna stitch about a half inch to an inch on either side of this X. So that my bow don't do this. Okay, I don't like that. <laughs> so I'm going to stitch it down. <laughs> and Sue said, what was Sue saying about the vintage machine? I missed it. I don't, I lost it now. Trying to rebuild Japan after World War II, the U.S. government helped the Japanese economy by rebuilding their manufacturing, starting with household appliances, sewing machines, irons, etc. <clears throat> I have my mom's machine. It has been mine since I was 16 years old. That's from Joyce. Susan T says, good night, everyone. Was with the grandbaby today. I'm tired. So good night. Thank you, Susan, for participating in the chat about the vintage machine. So now I'm trying to put a pin through the center of this X and put a pin through the center of this other X. So I can line up these centers. I want to stitch right over these centers a little bit. Just a half inch to an inch. And then that way my centers um, will be stuck together instead of just flying free.
So once I stick a pin in the middle, I'm just sticking four pins around it to hold it in spot. It probably won't stitch perfectly, but it'll be close enough for me. And I'm gonna stitch from the outside of the bowl that will show the most, I guess. Whoops, my pen came out. <laughs> See if I can stick this in here. That's close. And one more. This one's off a lot. <laughs> All right, so I've just put some pins so I can hold that down while I just stitch this X just in the center. It doesn't have to be all the way up. I got to get out of these too. All right, come on, release. <laughs> and even though I pinned it still went off a little bit that might have been the one I was having trouble with too my pins lined up just perfect it was about a quarter inch over on the inside but I don't care My bowl won't flop in the middle when I wash it. On the outside, I just broke my thread trying to get it out. Yeah, not too bad. So you can't hardly see it on this fabric. So if you got a dark fabric I'm on the inside, you want to care, depending on if you're using neutral thread. I'll show it to you. No secrets. <laughs> Let me just cut strings here and then I'll show it to you. I don't even know what time it is. Isn't that terrible? It's 9.27. Woo, I've been talking. <laughs> we do a sewing chat. I made one bowl cozy. <laughs> All right. So on the outside of this bowl, I went back and stitched. You can see the double stitching about right here to there. And then I also went the other way. And then on the inside, you can see where I got off the main row of stitching right here. Even though I pinned it, right here it's not too bad. But the other way, it was a little bit off. And, like I, and the other thing that I didn't do was I didn't mark like where was the center diagonal either. I just eyeballed it. So that could be why too. Still got another thread. But I'm okay with that. And now my bag won't pull apart when I wash it. How about that? <laughs> cute, 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 cute. Inside fabric, outside fabric. So that's cute. And Susan says, I do that too, T. Keep them in line after washing. Right, because nothing is a problem and why you, um, while you're using it. And then when you go to wash it and it comes out the washing machine looking like who did it and what for, <laughs> then you're trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do with this? So, And Deanne said, that's a good idea, T. I hate when they separate after being in the dryer. Um... Colette Stark says, great live chat and so. Hi, Colette. So Wayne says, now you need a popcorn bag so you can eat your ice cream and popcorn while watching TV laughing out loud. You know, that's I, I have a friend that does uh, chips. She likes kettle chips and ice cream. And I have never liked eating salt and ice cream. I'm the cake and ice cream or the pie and ice cream. 
uh, I never got into that. And one of the, I think one of the reasons is because I don't like kettle corn. So I don't like the uh, uh, sweet popcorn. Is there a pattern for them? I just, I just use the AccuQuilt die cutting system. There is all kind of videos. Uh, like I said, basically you just cut a 10 inch square of fabric, a nine inch square of batting. You center them. Uh, you mark your centers. You fold your pieces in half, right sides together, one piece of batting and fabric. And then you make your center darts. And people just eyeball in there. You go down from the point of your dart to about an inch. Uh, to make a dart, you do that on all four sides. You can mark that as well. You can make your own pattern so easy. And Susan Ural says, I have made tons of bowl cozies. So that's pretty cool. Came out really cute from Don. Thank you, Don. So Becca did a popcorn bag a few weeks ago. Yes, I've seen those. I do um, eat popcorn. And I would, I'm one of those people that I can eat air pop popcorn, so it would be great for me to uh, use that. My husband probably wouldn't go for that. He, uh, I, I used to have an air popper. They retired my air popper because it was just air pop popcorn. <laughs> and Stephanie told me, and it's green. <laughs> yes, Stephanie. Yeah. Thank you, Vicki. And Deborah told me, that's her. The friend that likes uh, ice cream and chips. I wasn't going to throw you under the bus, girl. <laughs> Winona Mixon says, join late. I'm sorry. Hi, Tien, everyone. Hi, Winona. Uh, thank you, Delena. Uh, the Quilting Fabrics Lady and Quilt Store says, yes, there is. There, I'm sure there's a pattern for everything. Uh, somebody has it, and it's going to be out there free, so you'll find it somewhere, but watch a video. It'll be, <laughs> it'll be much more entertaining. <laughs> Lizette Zaya says, joining late. Hello, T and friends. Hope everyone is doing well. Hi, Lizette. Welcome. Thank you, Tanya. Ray said, my brother says, get back to sewing, sis. <laughs> <laughs> right. I did one bowl cozy. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> These chats are long. Uh, Don says you can spray air popcorn with Pam to get the salt to stick. Tip from Weight Watchers. So that's cool. And I've got to trim the batting. So trimming one quarter inch off works very well you don't have to do the half inch so i'm gonna do that again i like that a whole lot better than that first one i did and i was gonna try the half inch and then i was also gonna try stitching and then trimming my seam but now i know what works i don't have to do all that so just eyeball a quarter inch off just taking some of that batting out is a big help My brother telling me to sew. I think he won't bag or something. I was thinking about doing something for Christmas. We'll see. We'll see how my time goes, right? And I may as well trim the other one. And I try to make sure I got the bearded, the needle punch part of my batting to the wrong side of my fabric. So no bearding will happen on the outside of my fabric make sure i put it back right and here i am making sure i cut batting and my pattern piece together so that i can have them ready to sew when i'm pulling them apart <laughs> so i can trim this batting yep but that was much better work And then I'm doing it folded in half so I don't have to go around the whole thing. All right. So 
too by the time I get to retreat. I might have it all figured out, girl. <laughs> That's a shame. I realized when I saw that this bobbin thing hits the rubber, that's what makes it spin. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's why I said they were pretty inventive with this singer to be at that time. Period. 1950s for me, but it's a whole lot more out there before that. All right. We need big X's. You think we learned our lesson and going to mark? Nope. <laughs> We're going to do it. Oops, I got a uh, thread. I forgot. If I don't pull my tail out long enough, I need to sew onto something and not cut my thread. That's what I need to do. But on that bowl, I was going around, and so I didn't have anything to sew onto. Cut this so I get a good point. Whereas automatic needle threader when you need it. Went through that pretty good that time while I was complaining. All right, here we go again. My brother says so. <laughs> okay, let me put that down. Say, get some stuff done. We're not coming out of here with just one bowl, Cozy. I need one. <laughs> Good night, Tanya. Cricut has a free cozy pattern too. It's similar to the AccuQuilt dye. That's good to know. You can cut them on your electronic uh, cutters. That's cool. Okay, I don't know how you came apart because I didn't cut you. So why are you apart? I have no idea. But we're going to continue to sew anyway. But the basic bobbin winding goes back decades before that. Mm -hmm. And I know Deborah has a singer that has that long bobbin. Now that is strange. Like a cam or something. She says she has a Bernina 820. And I, I wonder if that's the record number because I thought it was an 8 something. Is it an 880? Um, the old record. I It's one of those older models too. I have it set up. I've sold on it a couple of times. I'm, I don't, I'm not loving it yet. But like I said, I've only sold on it a couple of times. It's getting faster and easier to do my um, darts with the backing up. It just takes practice. <laughs> Sue says fireworks are going off. Yep. Just mentioning, it's like all summer we have them. Once they say Memorial Day, about two weeks before that, 
We have them all the time. I can be knocked out sleep two o'clock in the morning. Somebody going off with fireworks. Just rude. Okay. Now we turn it. She said it's like a rocket shape. The um shuttle that Deborah is talking about. Well, that I mentioned. <laughs> Sue tomorrow it's gonna be fun taking the dogs out for tea. Yep. Be looking at you for protection. But Wayne says, give it about two more weeks and we'll have them going off from 9 p.m. to at least 3 a.m. until July 5th or 6th. See, we go all the way through the Labor Day. It's like, I don't understand how people don't have money to pay their bills, but they got plenty of money to buy some fireworks. So, Whoops. Put that down. I think I'm am I done. I got one more over here. And that's it. I thought I was done. Okay. Okay. Now, if I was not doing this on a live, I would just chain stitch and keep going and just worry about putting these together at the end. Yep. But we can at least get two cozies done doing this live. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Talk about lack of productivity here. <laughs> what did you make in two hours? Two bowl cozies. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm not making a profit. <laughs> Good thing I'm not in the business of selling them, huh? Dorsey is reminding people to take a peek and see if you have hit the thumbs up. We have over 100 people and we only have 77 thumbs up. Check before you go. <laughs> so we're going to get this one pinned, get it sewed and clipped. And hopefully top stitch before we leave. You know, you never know if I'll start reading comments again because they're flying by. <laughs> uh, Joe Carmel says, hey, tea and quilters listening while driving home. Be safe. You girl, I know you can't wait for vacation. You a hardworking woman. That's all I can say. Who says she make it a habit to hit the thumbs up before I enter the live chat? Well, thank you. Okay, you need one more over here in this corner, I think. And then, oh, I got one more I missed. I don't know how I'm pinning. Because how am I missing spots to pin? Like, how do you do that? How do you do that? All right. So we're ready to sew. I keep, I keep moving my knee to do the knee lift. <laughs> oh my goodness. I need to take this shoe back off.
put this pen in too far. Sometimes I have to lift and take them out. Oh, that's because they're in that V. That's when I have to take them out. It's like I missed that stitch and I automatically want to go back. And I need to not go backwards. I'm going to be an expert by the time retreat comes, if I sew anything. <laughs> Although I'm not sewing anything. I only sew when I come on here, when I have to do the live sewing chats right now. Because I got other things to do. Okay, we're coming back around to the top here. want to get this pin out. Okay. So now we can turn this, hopefully. Don't break my thread. Don't do it. Ow. <laughs> All right. Municipal all you made was two bowl cozies and 100 people happy. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. When I come over here on um, Saturdays, I, I don't think you all want me to sew because this chat is just packed. Before I can even get started, I got lines and lines of stuff I got to read through the chat. So it's like, y'all don't want me to sew. Y'all just want me to chat. In two weeks, I will be on my summer break. That's from Susan. Can hardly wait. It's been a rough couple weeks. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> I know when I was working and getting my vacations, I always took my vacations when the boss was uh, uh, working. If she took, if I found out I had scheduled vacation, like say during the 4th of July or something like that, and she wasn't going to be there, I would cancel my vacation because it was like a double vacation knowing she wasn't there <laughs> it's like i'll take my vacation the next week just want to make sure i get all of the edges poked out here using my finger because all of my stuff is packed up I'm using it with the uh, cross body bag. So all of my, uh, my bone, my boner, <laughs> and that is what it's called, but it's a weird name. But yeah, it's in the, it's packed up to be used at retreat. Okay. So we can't go pulling that out. I put two of them in there. Um. Remo is also reminding people to hit the thumbs up. Hey, June Hansen says hi to you and everyone. She was the birthday winner this week. We did a drawing on Wednesday. I heard that was great and wonderful. Eric, Eric Oda got his start here. How's it going, T? I'm still, I'm all done with dinner. Girl, I'm on ball number two, okay? <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> I've been talking. I'm um, I'm not making my quota for the sweatshop. That's all I can say. I want to 
make sure I get this fabric up in the top so when I stitch it down, it's going to get caught. And then I'm going to put a couple of pins in my opening. All right. And right here. All right. Girl, Teresa Louise, I'm a bad employee. Don't hire me. <laughs> Nothing will get done, but I will talk with the people. <laughs> You looking for somebody to entertain? That's me. <laughs> mm -mm. Going around here to get that opening now. extra thread we don't like that we'll get rid of those they're coming out my hole over <laughs> i don't know what's wrong with me i need to go to sleep <laughs> i'm about to get slap happy on her can't commit as before my granddaughter has come in the room and took over my seat where I was had the laptop and the only chair where I was sewing laughing out loud you explain a lot to us even when we are chatting you're always having fun uh, quit laughing at me quilting lady <laughs> Uh, Joyce Baker says, I have a go kit. Oh, so somebody is cutting go kits, then I, I take it. Another string. I don't know where all these strings are coming from. Just out the blue. I don't know if they're on my desk or what. I'm sewing and all of a sudden I see a loose string. All right. Almost to the beginning. Okay. All right. I cut some of these thinking I would take them to retreat and sew some of these. Now I'm trying to find my center again so I can make this center seam. Because who cares what the inside looks like? I just don't want a mess coming out of my washing machine. I'm going to sew this one a little bit small. I'm not going to make it as big. It don't need to be big. Even a quarter inch is good. Just a tack. That's all it needs. And this time, um, I might back stitch to the I'm putting these pins on the wrong side now. Put one pin on the inside. That's not going to work because I'm stitching from the outside. So 
right there. One more or two. One more. And we're only going to do tiny tack this time. We're trying to hide the stitches, so we're testing stuff out. But they'll keep my hands nice and cool regardless, right? <laughs> so we're only going to do about a quarter of an inch each side of center. I was about three quarters of an inch on the other one. Okay, turn instead of breaking my thread. Hopefully this works. Back stitch. Whoops. All right, and we're done. Make it tiny. So the whole thing will be no bigger than a half inch. I got some batting in here that came out. Like, how does batting come out? <laughs> now I'm trying to cut it out the threads. And watch, I cut my threads that's holding it in the middle. <laughs> yep. Look like that's what's happened. Hold on, we'll pull it and see. <laughs> see? <laughs> I don't know what happened with that. I guess it didn't like, um, and I have to go back in here and put these pins back in here. I got three minutes. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I knew when I cut them seams, it had a piece of batting in it that uh, come through the material. As soon as I cut the batting, it cut the threads too, so... I don't know what happened with that because I put it together, right? Just want to see if I'm close to the line. I'm on the line. That's good. One more time. Got to do it right. Right there is good. And... I'm not even going to worry about the other way. I'm running out of time. <laughs> I got two pins instead of four this time. Hold on. All right. I need to take this shoe back off. Now, turn. Trying to get it right where I want it. All right, let's see if this one works with no batting. Without the batting, please. Yes, looks much better. Just one of those little freak accidents. And guess what? Making it shorter, like a quarter inch on each side, works beautifully. I was making it too big. I was doing an inch on each side of the diagonal X. So let's pull it, make sure. Yep, and I still got a piece of batting right here. <laughs> so it's working good there. Me still got a string. Ugh. Right here, I stitched on the outside. You can barely tell because it's a print, but it's up in here. I just did a quarter inch. But on the lighter one, it's stitched right on top. So make it small. Because all we need is a tack stitch. So that's pretty cool. It's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? That's what they used to say on the news all the time. All right. So that's pretty cool. And I'm happy with that. So make the stitching shorter. <laughs> Dorsey says, Hawaii is where I went on my honeymoon. That's pretty cool. I don't think I ever get to Hawaii at the prices that they charge in nowadays. I have to win a lottery or something.
Joyce says, I'm laughing so hard I can't breathe. Yes, I'm over here getting slap happy. I haven't read these comments in a long time. <laughs> he is looking loopy. Yep, because I've been, what I've been doing is, instead of laying in the bed thinking about sleep at 2 o'clock, because I've been trying to go to bed at a decent time, if I'm laying there more than an hour, I'll get up and go do something. And then once I do that something, I'll go back and try to go to sleep again. So I'm sleeping whenever I can get some sleep at this point. So Susan works for the school district at a grade school, so get a long vacation and still get paid. Woohoo, yeah. But I think they take it out part of your pay during the year, which I think people don't understand. So they think teachers are at home getting paid, but they've taken that out of their pay. My um stepdaughter, she um worked as a social worker for the school system. So you have to do that so you can keep your bills paid all year. <laughs> and June asking, has she been like this all night? <laughs> I've been trying to do good. <laughs> or just when I came in. Teresa says, all, all night as far as I can tell, laughing out loud. Oh, you oh, I forgot all about the sewing machine fiasco. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys will have to fill me in even after on your channel, Teresa. Yeah, I'm over here sewing on a machine. I don't know how to wind the bobbin. Don't know how to thread it for real, for real. It's, it looks simple, but I tied it on there like I do my long arm anyway, okay? Just in case. Yeah, how to rewind. I didn't know how to do that earlier today. I was uh, over here making name badges. And so I was trying to, uh, I said, let me sew one of these so I'll know before I go on retreat if I can sew on this featherweight. But yeah. The bowl cozy dye and the oven mitt dye from AccuQuilt are excellent for making gigs. Yep. Joe Carmel says, I can't wait to see this replay feeling like a little kid that had to go to bed while the grown up stayed up and talked laughing out loud. Yeah, I had some issues, but you can probably start about 45 minutes in or so because I kept talking to the people. <laughs> it was a lot of, uh, I did a lot of talking today. And for those that are just coming in, I am wearing the T-Quilts Quilt Retreats in the Lou shirt. And you all know I got my churn dash block up here hanging off the arch. Yes, I designed this myself. It was so funny because when I ordered the shirts, I sent them in and then they're going to send me a thing back going, uh, they asked me to upload a file. It could be a JPEG, whatever, whatever. Well, I uploaded a SVG file, which means that I've done the designing already, okay? Because I'm trying to make sure I get my shirts back on time. I don't want to be proofing somebody's edit. So I did my own shirt. And it was so funny because they talking about they got to have me uh, prove the uh, proof for editing and all that kind of stuff. It's like I've already done all that, okay? Just do my shirts. <laughs> Don't take credit for my design. See, we all have our days. Today was yours. Yep. See, can you leave chat replay on for the upload? Because that's what makes it so funny. Sue GSD was right there trying to save the day. Um, I think you have to be, if you're watching on a television, you're not going to see chats, of course, if you're watching on Roku. But if you're watching on a device that shows the chat, you can see the chat. If you turn your device long ways, well, I, I don't know if you have to have it long ways, but I know I'm not mostly watching on my iPad, and I see the chat come up on the right side of the screen when I'm watching on my iPad. So you can see the chat comments. I don't take them off. <laughs> and Melissa was saying, I don't know why you didn't check the chat. You couldn't sew nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mary says, love the shirt, T. Thank you. And also, you know, if you want to buy a shirt, you can buy it. You can order a shirt. They're on my website. Right now, I don't have shipping on the shirt. So if you do order a shirt, I have to send you an invoice back for shipping. And that's because the T Quilters retreaters are ordering off the website. And they're going to pick their shirts up at the 
uh, retreat. So they're not having to pay shipping. So I didn't want to have to go back and reimburse them for their shipping. Or if you want me to send you an invoice, just send me an email to tquilts at tquilts.com. You too can have a tquilts retreat shirt. And I'm probably going to keep this same style shirt. Um, I'm, I may change colors, but the reason why I was originally going to put like a year on the shirts and do a different shirt for every year, but I don't think I want to do that because I want people to be able to wear their shirt any retreat that they come to so that it's not a dated shirt. Like, okay, that's an old shirt. I'll know by the colors. I'll try to keep track by the color as to when somebody got a shirt. When I did the first retreat, since it was only seven of us, I didn't do a shirt. So, yeah. Thanks, Joe Carmel and June and Don and Mary. <laughs> and wash your hands. And Stephanie. <laughs> so, yeah. So, thank you guys uh, so much. We're going to go ahead and end here. Just because I have a feeling I'm going to get slap happy if I don't. And uh, I'm going to go get me something to eat. And then I'm going to move on to my next task for the quilt retreat. Which is in nine working days for me. The tenth day is actually retreat. So, it is what it is. And I got to make sure I stay on top of the things that I got to do. So, you all stay blessed. Be safe. And quilt out, everybody. See you Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for one-hour live chat. Bye. <laughs>